wire conflicts. They can't occupy the same space. They cannot. So uh, what are we going to do? We're going to plant short trees that really never get on up and cause problems. Knocking out people's power, allowing kids to climb the trees and in touching the wires, retrieving kites or whatever. Uh, trees rubbing on wires and uh, even trees that are near the wire falling on the wire during windstorms or just from decay. So these trees, since they're on their way out, uh, we have to somehow fix them. We can't do it. It's a fallacy. I'm the tree doctor. I'm also the tree mortician. <laughs> we have a question. I had heard that uh, Grants Pass is considering putting power lines underground, but that is a big job and quite expensive. Have you heard about that? A lot of the new areas are doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the old areas like now, the power company has a franchise. Okay. They, they pay the city a percentage of your electric <coughs> Does everybody know that? So does the cable TV. And so does the phone company. Their, their tank, the city gets a cut. Uh, why would the city make them do something that kind of bother them? But they have this nice relationship. Uh, one of the problems with wires underground is that it cuts roots. say roof. And then when I tell people that I gotta climb up on this roof, they go, well, what are you talking about? You mean the roof? <laughs> so for, for those people that think that, are, uh, that trees have roofs, <laughs> I'm sorry, they have roofs. Okay, I just wanted to clear up some of these, these misconceptions or these fallacies about trees. All I'm going to do is digress this whole time. Somebody raises their hand. We're, we're, going, to, we're going to jump on that question. But as long as as long as there's a, a lull here, let me just at least talk about what I came to talk about. The uh, problem is I can't read this because I don't have my bifocals. Uh, yesterday I was wearing my 40 isn't old if you're a tree shirt. Well, I hit that magic gauge and for some strange reason I can't read this. But uh, it says an effective tree management program include four major practices and their inspection, mulching, fertilization, and pruning. Okay. So let's take them one at a time, inspection. And that's most of the time uh, when tree surgeons are called in, they need somebody to translate this 3D situation into words and concepts that people can comprehend. So if you have a tree and you want advice, I can look at the tree based on my training and explain to you what it is that you're seeing. Tell you about the, the two clues to uh, disease in trees, which are signs and symptoms. Okay, the difference between a sign and a symptom is a symptom is the condition of the tree, and a sign of disease is a fruiting body, such as a mushroom from a fungus that's decaying the tree. It's termite frass. Uh, it's sawdust collecting at the base of the tree. A sign is the physical manifestation of the invasive pathogen, whatever it happens to be. And you people are, you look like you've been gardeners for quite a while. Excuse me for saying pathogen. We're all uh, together being I mean, it's got three syllables in it. So ring is all weather being That's right. And depending on my audience, I say pathogenicity. So, uh, the pathogenicity of certain uh, decay organisms is uh, more virulent than others. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of Latin here in trees. It's very difficult to talk about what you're talking about without using very specific terms. And there's one guy named Shigo, Dr. Alex Shigo, who was the uh, head of the Forest Services Research Division. He was their chief scientist, and he wrote. Uh, he compiled a list of several hundred misconceptions or myths about trees. Uh, there are a lot of problems with our understanding of trees that aren't accurate representations of the true situation with that tree. So we look at that tree, I, I, I get this one, this one comment all the time, this tree's too tall. Okay, now what is too tall? Okay, you can't put a number on it, it's a useless, it, it just doesn't do it. Okay. 
So what we need to do is we need to start narrowing it down, start focusing down. When we're going to talk about trees, let's talk about trees. Okay? So when I inspect a tree, I've got to do a systematic inspection. Okay? The, the, the inspection is one of the four things that tree guys do. Okay? So when I look at a tree, most of the time I start at the ground and work up. If I can somehow distract myself long enough to look at the base of the tree, the soil area around the tree, I can see any problem with the roots that are popping up. I don't have x-ray eyes, but I do have the ability to recognize situations with the treatment in the landscape immediately adjacent to the tree trunk. And I can see when there's a problem uh, that I've encountered before, because a lot of times it's highly repetitive. I mean, I mean you know, they, they grow, right? One tree's pretty much like another. Sometimes, in certain cases, uh, we'll notice, like say they've got grass up against the base of a white oak tree. Okay? White oak tree is the native desert tree. Okay? It's, a, it's an oak tree that grows with no irrigation. So here are these people, they put the lawn up there, and lawns are great, just, just wonderful, you know, beautiful tree, and it looks like an English garden. The problem is it rains for 10 months out of the year in England. Okay? Does it rain for 10 months out of the year here? Have these uh, Oregon white oaks, uh, Quercus gariana, for the Latin lovers, uh, do these white oaks have the ability to withstand a whole lot of fungus in the ground, which is what lawns do. Lawns create fungus in the ground. Uh, dark, moist uh, conditions are ideal for decay organisms. They rot. So when you plant a lawn, over this root system, or root system, of a white oak tree, it's stressed. So here we have these trees, they're in our yards, they're stressed, the people call me up, they say, what can I do about this stress, what can I do about these signs, what can I do about the symptoms? This tree is broadcasting it. Most of the time, if people that are laymen call me, the problem that they've noticed is dramatic. They don't notice mild symptoms. They don't notice just very slight uh, degradation of the, the vitality or the vigor of the tree. It usually takes a pretty dramatic uh, response by a tree to some decay organism or some other type of problem to, uh, to bring it to their attention and to call me and to find out what to do about it. We got a question? Yeah, are you contributing then to the fungus problem when you put wood chips around? Okay, mulching is the, the term for putting wood chips around the base of a tree. Uh, the, one of the problems with wood chips is that they are decaying. As they decay, the decay organisms use up the nitrogen that's in the soil, starving the tree. Uh, 